Welcome to VidBits, brought to you by premium support at Symantec. My name is Nephi Perry, and I'm a Principal Technical Account Manager for Symantec. I'll be your host for this tour of the VIP Manager console. This console, or UI, is a cloud service integral to your implementation of VIP. You're required to have a VIP license with a username, login, and registered credential ID to access this interface. Please contact your sales team or go to Symantec.com and request a sales contact to receive a free trial VIP account. For general information about VIP, please visit idprotect.vip.symantec.com forward slash main menu dot v. The VIP Manager Console is what administrators of VIP use to make settings changes or determine the health of users, credentials, or the account in general. When you log into your console, you will only be able to view the credentials and users associated with your account and no other data from any other account. First, we log in using the username password and then the six digit code associated with the VIP credential you added to the account when prompted. I find it simplest to use a desktop credential, also known as the VIP Access for Desktop app, because you can copy and paste that six digit code all on your machine, which is handy as this interface will log you out after 15 minutes of inactivity. The VIP Manager UI starts with a dashboard landing page seen here. The dashboard has three main views. The default that you see here is a view of all credential validations within the last week. As we look at the dashboard, it's important to remember that this data is pulled on demand, and there can be some minor lag pulling these reports depending on network traffic and your internet connection, so please be patient. Using the arrows on the sides of, or buttons in the middle, you can navigate to the other two views within the dashboard. When I click the right arrow, the next view shows two pie charts for credential distribution by type and the state of these same credentials. Notice the legend beneath each graphic. Moving again to the right, you can view user authentications in the last seven days by default. Notice the duration options on the left side. Clicking these allows you to view the last 30 or 90 days of activity in both user authentications and credential validations. Because this test environment we're viewing has no activity within user authentications, we'll return to credential validations to see what these graphs look like at 30 and then 90 days. These graphs can visually indicate an issue that should be investigated within your environment. Consider a 1% increase in failed authentications over the course of each week. That increase could be missed within the 7-day view, but should show on the 30-day and would be obvious on the 90-day view. This is a convenient view of some of the activity in your environment and should be monitored on a regular basis. On the bottom left, there is a window for recent administrator activity. You would see login activity and changes made within the manager. This is a snapshot of the recent admin activity within your account. We will look at reports tab later to see more detail on activities within your account. The notifications box in the bottom right shows any account specific notifications you should be aware of. Moving from the dashboard, let's select the users tab on the top control bar. By default, this will return a list of all users in your environment. Because this is pulled directly from the cloud on demand, it can take a few seconds to fully populate. We will look at managing users and credentials on another video. For today, notice the granularity of search options on the left and that within each user you have tasks like editing their account, disabling or enabling their credential, or generating a temporary security code. When the details of the user are expanded, you can view all of the credentials and registered devices associated with that user or that the user has registered within your organization. You can view details under each user like specific credential IDs, when each credential was added, and when the user last validated with each credential. Selecting the Credential tab, you are presented first with a count of total credentials. Notice similar search functionality on the left as we saw with the Users tab. When an enterprise has a large selection of credentials, it may be important to be very granular about the group of users or credentials you need to discuss. 
Next is the account tab. The links on the right allow access to account management and will be addressed in much greater depth in our next video. The account page shows important registered information under organization and contact information. Technical support staff at Symantec may use this information to validate identity when providing information on a support situation. It is therefore important that you keep your jurisdiction hash or jur hash and relevant contact and organizational information in a safe place. For the same reason, beware of shoulder surfing if you manage your VIP services in a public place. Though not pictured on this test account, directly below your jur hash will be your seat count. When you purchase a VIP account, again, when you purchase a retail VIP account, not a test account, you will be designated with a certain number of seats in anticipation of a certain number of users using the service. You can monitor the users registered and the users you have paid for as part of your VIP purchase here. Note, your technical account manager or TAM can help you adjust this seat count number up and down depending on usage. It's important to maintain your account with the proper number of seats. When you see this number go to red, which happens when there are more registered users than seats purchased, it is prudent to take out inactive users or to contact your TAM to increase that seat count for you. The next tab is Single Sign-On, where administrators can integrate our VIP solution with a compatible Single Sign-On solution. We also have an integrated Single Sign-On solution within our VIP product, which we will not cover in this video but comes with your purchase of VIP. Next is a Features tab where you can manage enabled features within your environment. Last, there is a Dynamic Provisioning tab showing credentials that have been provisioned for use with your account. It is important if you do provision credentials to ensure that your remaining credentials and the expiration date more than meet your credential demand. Provisioning credentials may be required or not depending on how VIP is deployed within your environment. There is no extra expense for credentials. Next up, the Policy tab. The policy configuration for your VIP implementation will be the critical elements that you discuss with the various stakeholders within your enterprise. Look for a moment at the various options available in this tab. This tab should be studied carefully in testing before your launch into production. If you have a production environment and are a new administrator learning about VIP, you should study this tab as well. You can select Edit on the top right of the window to look at the various options besides those selected. This page could be a video in itself with the various options available at each level, from choosing how many credentials an individual can register within your environment, to enabling push on mobile devices. Rather than learning from a video, engage your TAM in a conversation about your environmental use cases to maximize utility and limit your exposure to cyber threats. Notice the question marks on the right side. Clicking these question marks will pop up a help page that specifically addresses that line. I recommend that you read each help question mark through VIP Manager to familiarize yourself with each available component. Warning: Edit this policy configuration page will extreme caution as the changes you make in this window will go live into your production environment immediately. Worst case, if you do change settings by accident, you can simply change them back right away. When you're done, hit collapse without saving any changes. Next, we look at VIP Intelligent Authentication, or IA. IA is disabled by default. Intelligent Authentication adds a layer of security to your implementation, but should be done with care. Talk to your TAM about pros and cons of IA and what infrastructure is required by IA. There is an IA guide in Documentation portion of VIP Manager we'll look at towards the end of this video. Next is the Components tab. The three categories of components are the Enterprise Gateway or EGW, the Self-Service Portal or SSP, and the option to co-brand. The EGW is a tool you can use hosted in your infrastructure that acts as a pass-through for your user flow. It is an optional component depending on how you implement VIP in your enterprise. The SSP is also optional and it gives users a portal to manage their own credentials in your enterprise. The last tab is for VIP Plugin, where VIP Manager stores SAML Identity Provider settings. Now onto the Reports tab. 
I'll quickly scroll through the various types of reports to show you the volume of reporting available to you. You'll notice some of the same verbiage I have used throughout this video. This is where you can get reports on all the activities in your enterprise. Audit reports is where you can show all admin activity if you need to find the cause of changes in your environment. The last tab is the Help tab which I will again quickly scroll through. Notice how much help there is to get here, but also that it's broken down by the type of assistance you might need. As a new VIP admin, or when you initially purchase VIP, this is an area where, again, you should spend some time seeing what types of help is out there and learning about the product more. That concludes our high-level overview of the VIP Manager Portal. I do want to cover one other critical area for resources when just getting into VIP, the Documents section. Navigate back to the Account tab, then in the same right side where all the links are located, there's a Download Files link. Clicking that gives us nine subfolder groups of resources where we can explore. There is documentation for Enterprise Gateway, the EGW, a folder for Intelligent Authentication, IA, folders for the VIP Access app we've talked about, etc. Let's look at the third-party integrations folder. Notice the subfolders for the version of Enterprise Gateway that you have deployed. We'll choose the most current version, 9.8. We have guides to integrate with many of the major technologies available to enterprise environments, including Apache, ADFS, Cisco, ASA, ACS, and ISE, to name five of the 39 integration guides available. You can download all documents immediately from these folders within VIP Manager. And with that, we appreciate your time viewing this video and hope that it has been helpful for you. Look for more videos about VIP and our other cybersecurity offerings brought to you by Symantec Premium Support. Have a great day!